promises and async await in JavaScript are amazing, but they really suck at handling errors. If you're using dot catch or try catch statements, you're generally going to run into lots of error handling problems. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to fix those problems in multiple different ways. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And to explain how errors are kind of broken, I first need to show you this code. So the very simple code I have up here is a wait function that just waits for a certain amount of time. You can see I'm calling this to wait for one second every time I call get user. That's to kind of simulate an API request or something else like that, maybe a database call. And here, if the ID is two, I'm just throwing an error saying that the user does not exist. Otherwise, I'm returning the ID and just the name of Kyle for now. Again, to simulate accessing a database or a fetch request or something like that. Then finally down here, I'm actually calling get user. I'm passing at the ID of one, and you can see I'm console logging that user, but you can imagine this is code that uses that user for whatever purposes it needs. And down here in my console, you can see it prints out the ID of one and the name of Kyle. Now, if I change this ID to two and I save my code, you'll notice immediately down here, I'm going to get that error 404, user does not exist. And again, it's taking one second for all these things to run. So when I save my code, one second later, you can see it prints out either the result or the error. Now, obviously at this point, I'm not actually doing any error handling. So usually what you would do is you would add in a try catch statement or you would add in a dot catch block. In our case, I'm gonna use a try catch statement because that's probably the most common when you're dealing with async await. So I'm gonna say, hey, I want to try this particular code. And then I'm going to have a catch that is going to catch any types of errors that I have. And I can do something with that error. For example, I can console log the error. I can just say like, there was an error. Or maybe if I know there's a particular error, I can handle it in a specific way. But here I'm at least catching the error and make sure I'm handling it. Now, one thing that you will notice is I no longer have access to the user outside this try statement. So I need to move this console log and all the other code that you would normally have up into this try statement to make things work. Now you can see when I run my code, I'm getting that you know, message being shown. And if I change the ID of two, it's going to say there was an error instead of showing me that actual error because I now handled that with a catch block. For most people, this is probably the extent of how they actually do error handling, but this is definitely not ideal. The one problem that you're gonna see inside of this code is that I needed to move up all of the code that uses my user into this try statement. Now, this is not a problem in our code because we just have a single line, but if there's any error at all inside of this code, it's going to be caught by this catch right here. So for example, if I spelled user incorrectly and now I run my code and I make sure to change this to a one, so this would normally be a correct running statement, but you can see it says there was an error and it brings me inside this catch block. And if this catch block expected there to only be an error, anytime my get user ID was two, for example, when there's a 404, then obviously my code's now no longer going to work because it's erroring for a completely separate reason. So try catch is really not ideal because now all the code using the user needs to be inside this try. The only way to get around that would be to move this code out of here and instead have like a let variable up here where I say let user. And then down here, I define what that user is. And then I log out that user. Now this is going to work. You can see I get it printed out. And if I have like a typo, for example, it's going to throw an actual error instead of going into this catch block right here. But again, this code's not ideal because now I need to create this let variable out here. I need to define it here. And now I have a variable that I can redefine. For example, I could say user is equal to one and that's going to redefine my user variable, which is definitely not ideal. So there's a lot of problems with try, catch, and so on. So what I wanna do is kind of talk about some different alternatives you can use to make this work a little better. And the very first alternative I wanna talk about is just a really simple function you can write that is going to return to you an array of an error and a success state instead of using try, catch. So really quickly, I'm just gonna paste in this function then I'll go through what happens line by line. I just called this catch error. You can literally call it anything you want. It is a generic function. And the reason it's a generic function is because this is going to take in a promise. So we're gonna pass a promise to this function and that promise is a generic. It can have any return type. So you can see here, we're just calling dot Ben on that promise. And if the promise is successful, we return undefined for our error and we return whatever data comes from that promise. Now, if there was an error, we're just going to return that error inside of an array. So to use this function, I can just come up here, say that I want to call catch error. I'm going to say that my user is equal to calling catch error. And I just pass it in whatever my function is that I want. And we'll make sure that we await this just like that. I can get rid of all of this try catch related code. We'll keep this error thing in here because we'll handle it in just a little bit. But now instead of just getting a user object, I'm actually going to get an array that has an error and it has whatever my data is, my user. So you can see if I hover over the type for my error, it's either gonna be an error or undefined. If I hover over the type for my user, you can see it has my proper user type or it's going to be undefined. 
Now that's because of the way that I defined my different types. As you can see in my return type, I essentially said that it's either going to return an array that's undefined with my data or an array that is my error as the first object. And down here, that's exactly what I'm returning. So what I can do is I can say, if there's an error, well, then I want to do something in particular. Let's just say I'm going to console log this and return. There we go. We'll just return one or whatever. Since we're not in a function, we can't technically return. So we'll just put this inside of an else instead. So we'll say else right here. And then I want to put all the code related to my user right there. Now, all this code is going to work. If I hover over my user, you can see it has the correct typing here. And if I had an error, obviously, I can do anything I want with that error down here. For example, I could, you know, take my error and get the name or the message or whatever. Let's just get the message. It doesn't really matter. But as you can see, when I have the ID of one, everything works fine. Pass in the ID of two where there's going to be an error. And you can see right here, I'm going to get that error being printed out. And if for some reason I had a typo in my code, for example, I made a mistake in my code or it erred for some other reason, you'll see that it's going to actually throw that error right here and it's not going to get caught in this if statement section right here. So by doing this really simple function, I mean, it's only a few lines of code, we're essentially able to break out of the nesting of the try catch because try catch forced us to be nested inside of a block. But by doing this, we flattened all of our code out to one level of nesting, which makes it much easier for us to work with. Now let's recorrect the typing on that user. And I want to take this catch error function and actually bring it to the next level. What if we want to handle custom errors and only custom errors? For example, I don't want to get an error if I have any error at all. I only want to get an expected error because a lot of times you may have a function and you may know, okay, this get user function, I know that it's going to return a 404 error. So if I get a 404 error, I want to handle it. Otherwise, I want to throw it just like any normal error and it's going to you know, essentially be an unexpected error that I don't want to handle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to replace our catch error function with a brand new function. I'm going to call it catch error typed just so we know the difference between the two. And this one is a little bit more involved than the one before. Essentially, I now have two parameters that I can pass to this function. You can see here I have the promise just like before that I was passing it, but I also have an array of all the different types of errors that I want to catch. And I have some fancy typing stuff going on here. So for example, this E is essentially just saying, hey, this is something that is an error object. And I'm just making sure I return what that error object is here. Otherwise, all my code in the dot then is exactly the same. The dot catch just says, hey, if I didn't pass an array to this function, I want it to work exactly the same as the original catch error function. So it's just going to return the error like that. If I did pass an array of different errors though, I wanna check and see if the error that's being caught here is actually an error of one of these different types that I passed to it. If that's the case, then return it. Otherwise, throw this error. So essentially I'm saying, hey, if I don't pass any errors, just catch any error that there is and return it to the user. Otherwise, only catch the errors that the user specifies. And if it's not an error the user specifies, throw it because it's some type of unexpected error. So now all I need to do is create a custom error class. Luckily in JavaScript, this is as easy as just creating a class, extending error, and then we can define whatever we want on it. For example, I can define the name or I can add even extra properties to this if I really want. So now what I can do is I can say I want to call that catch error typed. And by default, if I pass absolutely nothing to this function for the second parameter, it's going to work exactly the same as our previous code. For example, here it's running. That's working just fine. Now, if I come in here and pass the two here, so that's an error, you're going to see I get the error being printed out. So that's all working as I expect it to. But now if I pass it a second property saying, you know what, I only want to catch the custom errors. So here we go. I pass along my array that says custom error. You can even see here my type here is either a custom error or undefined. So it knows it can only be that specific type. And if I give this a quick save, you'll now actually notice it throws this error. It doesn't properly catch this error. It completely throws this error. And that's because all the way up here in my get user function, I'm not throwing a custom error. I'm just throwing a random error. If I were to change this to a custom error, because this is some type of specific error I expect from this function, now you'll notice, since this is set to only accept custom errors, it's perfectly catching that right here. This is essentially a way to do type safety in errors slightly. It's not 100% perfect, but it allows you to say, okay, you know what? I want to catch the errors of these specific types, and it's going to only catch the errors of those specific types. There's been a lot of talk about adding into TypeScript the ability to specify that a function returns specific errors or essentially throws specific errors, but it's never going to be added to TypeScript. So these kind of custom functions that you can write, such as this catch error typed function, is really the best way that you can actually implement this into TypeScript in a very simple method. Obviously, it's a very simplified version of this error typing catching. 
Now, if you wanted to do a really advanced version of this, there's a library called Effect. I'll just real quickly bring over the home page for this Effect library. It's a massive library that does a ton of stuff, but as you can see here, it has some error handling directly built into it. And really errors are first class things inside the Effect library. And it works very similar to how you could throw a specific error in TypeScript if that was a feature. This library kind of has that built in because essentially everything is this effect type. And this effect type has an error type directly built into it. So every single thing that you do in this library has error handling directly built into it. Now, this is a massive library. I would possibly be interested in doing a tutorial on it. And if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below so I know if there's actually enough interest to warrant the incredible amount of time it would take for me to go through the documentation for this. But it's a massive overhaul library that you generally don't want to install if the only thing you want is this very simple error handling. But if you want some of the other features, this is a great choice. But again, for this very simple error handling, you can just write a rather simple function that allows you to do incredibly robust error handling and saves you from a lot of the problems that you run into when you're dealing with try-catch.